Pastor Joe, and uh, I have the, it is, a, it is a great privilege to be your pastor. And, um, you know, at the beginning of the year when, when we, the staff at Bemis were coming together and we were talking about this coming year, and there was a word that kind of surfaced for us this year, and it was together. And uh, that kind of helped to birth this idea of coming together for worship. We all love to gather outdoors and worship the Lord together. And we're like, you know what? Why don't we do this with our friends who live just over the Chautauqua Ridge? <laughs> and um, experience the blessing of synergy, where one and one equals three. And uh, it's good to be here together today <clears throat> and worshiping the Lord. I want to just give a couple of housekeeping things as we continue to move forward. I want to just say thank you to our folks that are, are cooking. If you could just express gratitude to them. They don't get to participate the same way that all of us do, but their act of worship this morning is, uh, is standing over the heat and making sure there's food ready. And um, some of them have been uh, praying for you already this morning. And I also want to just make sure you know that we are sharing this space with our friends with uh, Fine Art in the Park. And uh, after the service, and okay, yeah, you can clap for them too, yeah. They would really love to see your friendly faces. After the service, uh, it, it's open and you can wander on through and they would probably even love it if you purchased something that caught your eye. <laughs> but uh, we're grateful to be able to share the space this morning and for the village of Bemis and making sure that that all works uh, for us. And uh, I know Scott takes a lot of pride in making sure this, these grounds are beautiful and it's, it was all set up perfectly, so thank you. Uh, for that. And uh, the last thing I want to just call to your attention is next Sunday we're going to do this again. But we're going to do it in Sinclairville. Uh, I don't know the address for Minkler Common, but it's right in the middle of Sinclairville. If you find the fire hall, you'll find the, look for the big tent and listen for the music. Um, and come early, grab some seats, bring your lawn chairs, and let's worship together. Bring your friends and experience the glory of the Lord together as the body of Christ. Sometimes when we stay in our own space for too long, we begin to think that we're the only ones in the world. <laughs> and uh, so venturing out together, we're experiencing diversity and just community, like God truly intended it. But I wanna um, invite a good friend of mine, Woody. Come on, Woody, take your time, hurry up. <laughs> don't really, don't go fast. Yeah, come on up here, Woody's gonna pray for me. Um, you're oh, you're coming all the way back here. Yeah, you are. Come on back. Keep coming. Yep. Beep, beep. <laughs> Whoop. Right there. That's perfect. Uh, Woody and I have had the chance to share coffee a couple of times, but uh, this man has prayed for me a couple of times, and uh, I asked him if this morning he'd be willing to do that. He's also, as you can tell, a faithful Steelers fan. Willing <laughs> <laughs> to pray for me? <laughs> More than ever. <laughs> I'm afraid to give you the microphone if I'm honest right now. <laughs> but the truth is that this man loves Jesus. And uh, the Spirit of God has spoken to him through him to me on several occasions. And uh, I just invite him to pray for me this morning. Lord, we come to you this morning to pray over Pastor Joe, our shepherd, to give him the wisdom and the proper words to share with us. After all, it is your word, Lord. And we all know that your word is truth. Give him the courage to convey your message this morning to us, the congregation. Let us all be sponges to absorb your word. Amen. I 
feel more confident with you standing here. You want to stay here with me? Uh, you can work your way back down there. Kurt needs you too. <laughs> Woody is not ashamed of the gospel because he knows that it is the power of God for the salvation of all people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a gift to be able to pray with one another and to be able to pray for one another. And I just want to... Um, I want to put this out there now while hopefully I have your attention. I know that like, I got like 12 minutes of attention span here because there's a lot of other things happening. But um, as we come into our last song today, and I didn't tell Brennan this, but I know it's okay because I know Brennan. Um, we're going to invite you to, to come if you'd like to be prayed over. If you'd like someone to stand in the gap for you this morning, uh, we'd love to do that. And... Uh, There'll be people, they don't know this yet, but there'll be people up here and, and as we're singing, if you'd like to come forward and, and be prayed over, don't leave today wondering. You know, maybe you came with a lot of hurt and a lot of baggage and a lot of stuff and uh, you're feeling kind of beat up. Don't leave wondering if God loves you. You can know that today. God has put people here today to pray for you, to stand in the gap for you and with you. And you're not alone in this journey. And uh, I know at times it might feel like that, but you're not. Uh, the church is here, and the church is God's best plan. It's his only plan, actually. And God is present through his church to other people. Um, you know, I wasn't quite prepared for this last week. We've spent quite a bit of our time, about 20 years now of our lives, Leslie and I, uh, raising children. Do any of you have children that are in college? We need, we need a support group for those of you that have children who have gone away to college. Because what I've been thinking about this morning, too, and uh, was that we work really hard to raise up children, and, and we're preparing them for life, you know, after they're home with us. But we don't prepare ourselves for life at home when they're gone. <laughs> and uh, I was praying this morning about that specifically, because I know that our house is different, and it's going to get different next week, and... Um, many of you have sent kids off to college and you've entrusted them really back into the Lord's hands because there's nothing you can do about it right now. Now that's not cause for great anxiety because God is really faithful. But I want to I pray for our college students right now. I know that uh, next week and the week after we're going to spend some time praying for our high schoolers and our teachers, but our college kids have gone back to college. Some of them have gone to institutions that are that are Christian and they have a formation set up in place that align with Christian values and Christian teaching and others are not necessarily in that environment but we want to pray into God's presence with them while they're away so I want to just pray for you as parents and for them right now if that's okay holy God thank you for the opportunity to gather for worship and Jesus thank you for the opportunity to raise children that you entrust to us for a season. God, we entrust back into your hands our adult children as they are away from home and out of the reach of mom and dad and in a maybe seemingly scary place. But God, your word says that you are with us wherever we go. Your word says us that you knit us together in our mother's womb, that you actually formed children that you entrusted to us. So God, I'm calling upon you right now to make yourself known to them while they are away in ways that are unmistakable. May their faith be deepened. May they grow in love with you and with others. May they share the good news of the gospel with people that they encounter and may they grow richly in community. God, I pray that you would protect them against the schemes of the devil that their minds would be of sober assessment. God, that their hearts would stay soft and malleable and that they would allow the potter to continue to work. God, I pray for parents right now who maybe are experiencing similar feelings to what I've felt and what we have felt. Lord, I pray that you would give them an assurance that you are with them, that there would be a sense of, of confidence in the work that has been done and that which is to come. And Lord, that you would give us a sense of purpose in life outside of just rearing children, but the next leg in the journey. 
And God, that through all of this, you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. One more uh, just bit of gratitude. And I just saw her. I, and she, would ne she probably doesn't want me to do this, but she's riding in the cart. So I'd like to give a hand to Miss Joni in the shuttle this morning. If you, uh, one of the challenges of work spring in, in the village is that parking gets further and further away the later you get here. So if you get here early next week to, to Sinclairville, you'll have better parking odds. But uh, thank you, Joni, for making the shuttle available and for, for carting people around. And uh, yeah. I wanted, to, as I was talking to the Lord about today, I wanted to just convey really one message, and I hope you hear this. So, if you're if you're new to to faith, or if you're you're not even sure about faith, or if you're like I've experienced faith and I want nothing to do with it, so maybe you're going in the other direction right now. Just listen to this for just a minute. God created you and has a plan for you, and uh, that might seem unthinkable, and it might seem like it's not possible, and it might seem like. It doesn't feel like it's happening, but, but God has a plan for your life. And we're going to look to a prophet today who experienced God's call on his life and then lived into that. And then he also told the Lord, hey, take this away from me. I don't want to do this any longer. But I want you to know beyond doubt that God has a plan for your life, regardless of where you are in life right now, regardless of what season of life you're in. The writer of Ecclesiastes talks about these different seasons in life. And uh, maybe one season is coming to an end, but another season is coming. Right? Another season is coming. God has a purpose for your life. And that purpose is the same all the time. God's purpose for your life is that you would bring glory to God and that you would enjoy his company forever. Amen. And that you would experience the real presence of Christ in ways like maybe you've never experienced before. The people are going to change. For a while we're entrusted with little babies and then they move into these toddlers that start walking around. And I'm like, what are you doing? Right? And then they learn that great word, no, and we spend the rest of our lives trying to get them to say yes. <laughs> and, I mean, seasons change, but your purpose never does. My guess is, if you look around today, you'll find people that are looking for meaning in life. And you probably saw a person this morning when you looked in the mirror looking for meaning in life. <laughs> longing to know, why on earth am I here? Because everything changes all of the time. If COVID hasn't taught us one thing, it, or if it's only taught us one thing, maybe it's that, that everything changes all the time. I remember back when uh, we were in the, in the very beginning of the, the pandemic and navigating that, and it was, whew, I would get instructions one day, and in the same day, get other suggestions or instructions. I'm like, my goodness. And that's just in one area of life. If you brought your Bibles, I'd invite you to turn with me to the prophet Jeremiah. And I just want to read a couple of words and then uh, give you a little bit of teaching. Understanding that outdoors, it's tough to stay focused. Especially for a guy like me who, uh, you know, the, the squirrel moves and I'm all about that. See, the dog just got up and I was like, oh, look, there's a puppy. Right? And it's not the puppy's fault. That's all me, right? But I want to just give you... A couple of words, and uh, this is the word of God, and it is true. It's been uh, attacked, it's been tried to be disproven. It's, I mean, we can get into all those stakes and claims, but at the end of the day, it proves faithful every time. And um, this is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah in chapter 1. It says this in verse 5 it says, before I, or before God, formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations, or one who prophesies or speaks the word of God to people. Then Jeremiah, I can almost, I and mean, he's a young man right now, he's about 17 or 18 years old, I can almost hear the, the, the original language doesn't have a great translation for us right here in this next word. It says, ah, sovereign Lord. It's kind of like this exacerbate, like just, oh, God, please. I do not know how to speak, for I am only a child. And then the Lord's response. Do not say I'm only a child, for you must go to everyone that I send to you, and that I send you to, and you must say whatever I command you. 
Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. And I want to pause right there and I just want to reiterate a couple of things. God knit you together in your mother's womb. It's a miracle that you were born. It's a miracle that you have breath in your lungs and that you're able to breathe. And Creation is a beautiful thing and it reveals the creator all the time. In our natural world, we tend to look past that and we forget about that at times. But step back just for a couple minutes and recognize that God knew you before anybody else. Jeremiah in the 29th chapter shares this uh, great, oftentimes uh, quoted, but usually out of context uh, statement from uh, the 29th chapter. It says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And those are all true statements, and they're true for you as they're as true for you as they were for the people of Israel that Jeremiah was prophesying to. And that plan has always been the exact same thing. It's kind of crazy when you think about the fact that we all have the exact same purpose. The exact same purpose. It's fulfilled in different ways, right? You're all created uniquely and individually, and you're going to do different things, and you're going to reach different people, but you have a purpose, and God designed you that way. And until you figure out what that purpose is, you're going to continue to search. I didn't tell him I was going to tell this story, but uh, this morning on our way here, he, he shared this with me, so I'm going to tell you it. He said it, and, uh, and he would be okay with that, I'm sure. Right, Tom? Whoever Tom is, Tom told me this story. Tom is, uh, Tom is a great evangelist. I remember one day we were on a men's shopping excursion, and really we don't shop, we just go for eating steak. But uh, we go to eat steak. Sometimes a couple of guys go to buy their Christmas presents. Tom goes for one other purpose. Tom goes to witness to somebody about Jesus. And I remember we were standing in pennies, and I'm looking around, where's Tom? Where's Tom? That's a regular occurrence. Where's Tom? And I turn around, and Tom's got these young couple, and he's sharing the gospel with them in pennies while we're out shopping. Yeah, praise God for that. That man is unashamed of the gospel. He called me the other day to tell me that he had led a woman to Christ. Well, he wasn't sure that he led her to Christ, but he was faithful at presenting to her. He told me the rest of the story today, and that's what I want to share with you. Maybe you don't always feel like fulfilling your purpose. That was Tom. He said, I didn't want to, sh I had a really bad, he had had a tough couple of days. He said, I just wanted to go in and hang out and not deal with people. And this woman started sharing about her life and how it was bad and she was struggling with alcohol and drugs. And Tom just said to the Lord, I don't want to talk about you today. Why are you doing this to me? And a light bulb went off in my head as he was sharing this story with me today. The prophet Jeremiah in the 20th chapter says something to the Lord says that he tells the Lord, I don't want to speak of this anymore. I don't want to do this. I know you set me apart. I know you created me for this, but I don't want to do this. And then he says this, and listen to this very carefully. He says, but in my heart, <laughs> there's something happening all the time. This constant state of tension, essentially. And you might not feel like sharing today. You might be navigating one of the worst days of your life, actually. And I've had some of those days, and Tom had one of those days, and everybody around you has had some of those days where we've experienced kind of the struggle of life. And we just don't want to do it. But if you can find within you an ounce of energy to share the hope that you have with somebody else, your life will change. Because in that moment... You'll be doing exactly what you were created for. Exactly what you were created for. And when we live in the sweet spot of purpose, we experience the joy of the Lord. We experience the, the presence of Christ in ways like never before. 
it's one thing to share with others, to be kind, right? To just use kind words. It's a whole other thing when you cross that threshold and you give them life. And you give them meaning. And you offer them purpose. As I was talking with the Lord this morning about today, I had this overwhelming sense and I could be complete. It could have just been indigestion this morning, okay? It might have been. But I had this overwhelming sense that the vast majority of us are longing for purpose. And that maybe, maybe like Tom, maybe like myself at times, you've just not engaged. And what takes place after that is what I want to talk about for a couple more minutes. Because the enemy begins to break you down. The enemy in that moment begins to break down what you think about yourself. He starts to identify you with your past failures. He starts to tell you you're not worthy. He starts to say things like, see, you screwed up again. You did it again. You engaged again in whatever sin it was. You, you failed to share about Jesus. You, you were not faithful to the calling upon your life. And if we're not really, really careful, that will overtake us. And we'll lose meaning and we'll lose purpose. And when we stay there, it's hopeless, actually. Jesus did a couple of things, and this is what I'll leave you with. If that's you today, if you're navigating this state of tension where, where maybe, you know, Tom was really bold about it, he just said, I didn't want to share. I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> he has since gone back and found that woman and put a put a track that he hand wrote into her hand. I, I just love Tom. If you have a chance to meet Tom, you'll, you'll recognize Tom. He introduces himself. Find Tom. But if you are longing for purpose and you're living in that state of, I can't, I'm not worthy, I'm not whatever, you fill in the blank. Jesus did a couple of things. He actively engaged the scriptures. Actively. He was engaged in prayer on a regular basis. Worship was a routine part of his life. And he was always living on mission. As he invited the disciples to kind of engage in that with him, a few things started to happen. When the disciples were in the sweet spot, they experienced the joy of the Lord and they were filled with confidence. But the moment they started to walk on the other side of the road or to push back a little bit or to doubt or whatever, they immediately began to find themselves filled with frustration. They had division inside of the body of Christ. They experienced bitterness and selfishness. All because they got off track. And they failed to live with meaning and purpose. I know that I've had a lot of conversations with people I've had, a, I've had a lot of conversations with several of you about what's the meaning, what, what, what am I here for? You are here to bring glory to God. It looks different as life goes on and the people that you're engaging with changes, right? Those of you that have young children at home, praise God, that's your primary responsibility right now. Equip them. Teach them who Jesus is. You can give them a whole lot of things. If you give them a perfect education, if you give them all the money in the world, if you give them all the right clothes and the right friends, but you don't introduce them to Jesus, in the end, they've lost. And they're lost. They're your primary point of contact right now. When they move on out of the house, what's next? It looks different, but the purpose and the meaning are the same. And the gifts that God has given each of you fulfill a very specific role. And he's created you uniquely. He's called you by name. Some of you are having some anxiety and struggles right now. That was just kind of evident. I want to just invite you to, to sit and be present with the Lord for a minute. There was a group of people that prayed for you this morning. And we prayed really confidently and really passionately that, that you would experience the Lord today. That those of you that are maybe lost right now, I'm talking to you. The only way to be found is Jesus. I can't make that any clearer. The only way to be found is Jesus. 
And when you live in that sweet spot of experiencing His presence and sharing that with others, you will find joy and peace that surpasses all understanding. You'll have meaning and life will be good. Outside of that, you're going to find tension all the time. So as we uh, get ready to, to bring our worship team back up for just a minute, I want to um, want to leave you with the words of Jesus. He said this to the disciples in the 16th chapter of John. He said, in this world you're going to have trouble. Amen? I mean, you can affirm that. You really can. But listen to his final statement. He said, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Friends, if you're not sure about the meaning of life or about your role in life, I want to talk with you after the service. Our staff would love to talk with you. The people who are, who are Jesus fans want to talk with you. Because there is no greater joy than knowing Jesus and making him known. Life all of a sudden has a purpose. I want to pray for you. And then uh, I want to ask uh, Britta... Can Britta hear me? Britta Brown. Of course. Every time. I, I shouldn't call people out by name. It doesn't matter who it is. Uh, they're just... <laughs> I'm going to need a handful of people. If you were gathering with us this morning in the prayer circle, or I'm seeing some other folks, like uh, if, you, if you pray regularly at Park Church with people, I just want to invite you to come and work your way up to the front. As the worship team leads us in our final song, I want to invite you to come today. You don't need to, to struggle any longer. You don't need to feel alone any longer. You can just be part of the kingdom of God in a really uh, tangible way. And we want to introduce you to that or, or reintroduce you to that. But let's pray right now. Would, would you join me? Father, I'm distracted at times by the, by the wind right now. gather today to worship you, to sing praise to you, to give you glory and honor. God, some are still hurting deeply. Some are still navigating deep, deep pain, deep wounds. Some are still seeing things uh, through a dimly lit mirror and, and unable to grasp of that which is before them. So Father, I pray that you would move in ways that I don't understand, that we don't understand. That as the wind blows, that your spirit might move among us. That you would overwhelm us with your presence. That you would fill us with a joy that comes from knowing you and making you known. That like Jeremiah, even though we may come up with excuses, Father, for not doing something, that we recognize that you are present all of the time, and that you are good, and that you love us, that you care for us, that you meet our deepest need. joy, and hope, peace, patience, God, that you move in ways that we don't understand. Be glorified, Jesus. Move people by the power of your Holy Spirit into right relationship again with you. In your name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to pray with someone this morning while, uh, while we're singing, I know it's awkward to take that first step. Especially when everybody's around you. But it's amazing how the Lord moves once you begin to step. You don't have to leave today wondering. You don't have to leave today in opposition with the faith. But you do need to take that first step. Jeremiah needed to be faithful. Moses needed to be faithful. Even Jesus needed to remain faithful.
Let's worship the Lord again, church. Church, as you uh, as you get ready to leave today, you have one job. It's to share the hope that you have been given with others. When you do that, you'll find peace. Don't beat yourself up when you misstep. That's the lie of the enemy. Celebrate when you're walking in confidence and faith. May the Lord Jesus Christ, the only one who is good, may the Lord Jesus Christ be before you to lead you, beside you to justify you, behind you to defend you, above you to guide you. Might Jesus the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, be within you. Evelyn, are you coming all the way up here? Come on. I just want to share a, a testimony before I tell you to love the hell out of your neighbors. <laughs> God moves in the natural world as much as he moves in the spiritual world. And a young man came for prayer who was uh, navigating some difficult things in the physical. And when they prayed in faith, the young man's physical... Is it you, Peter? He's not young. <laughs> Peter was having tremors. They prayed in faith, and Peter is still. Church, you are the hands and feet of Jesus. Go and love the hell out of your neighbors in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.